Welcome to another uh, Flash tutorial. Today I'm going to show you uh, some advanced techniques on using uh, SketchUp and using uh, CamBam. Um, and today we're going to do something to use the Sharpie markers and we're going to uh, use the Sharpie markers to mark up a character for that we're going to put on a uh, flying surfboard. Um, a micro flying surfer and uh, we're going to do a Bart Simpson character and we're going to do use the Sharpie markers to uh, color him and we're going to do both sides um, so he, he uh, this technique is going to show you how to <coughs> register your uh, um, your drawing such that you can flip it over and print on the other side and then you know, cut it all out when you're done. Um, I like using CamBam. It's a uh, it's a a program that uh, that uh, you can purchase, or if you want, you can uh, you can use Sandboxy um, to uh, install a copy of of CamBam and and um, then if you need to you can delete it and install it again later on over and over and over uh, so anyhow I start out with uh, with SketchUp and uh, from SketchUp I then go to a DXF file and I bring that into CamBam and use CamBam to create the G-code uh, there's some advantages here that <coughs> I find that I really like. Uh, that's why I'm doing it this way. Um, but anyhow, <coughs> we started out with the Bart Simpson character. Um, this was just the initial outline for, for the character. And what I've done here is I've created registration uh, points, uh, four of them in all. Each one is six inches uh, so this point and this point are six inches apart and this point and this point are six inches apart um, and that allows me to flip the part over and, and uh, register it uh, so that I can uh, align the, the uh, sharpie marker up to do the reverse side once I've got uh, one image made then I flip it on the um, uh, flip it on the red axis, groups red, and that that will give me the uh, mirror copy to go on the other side. Um, so what I've done is this is a three color uh, rendering that we're going to do. Uh, we're going to do a, a black outline. That's what this uh, this section is for. We're going to do the shorts uh, in blue, and then we're going to do the body in orange. Um, then we have the, the <coughs> file that uh, we're going to use to cut the whole thing out with a uh, 16th inch bit. So each one of these uh, registration points here has to be uh, the same for lining everything up. So. Um, once I've got a, a, a drawing ready, then I'm going to select all of the, the uh, parts for it. And then I'm going to go to the tools. And I've got a, a tool in here called export to DXF or STL. Again, I don't remember where this tool came from. It may have been from um, a plug-in or something that I got. Uh, it's very useful. Uh, but basically, you know, you tell it whether you want to export in inches or millimeters. Um, and then I, I use this to create polylines and then I give it a, a you know I just uh, give it a file name uh, in this particular case I think we used uh, uh, program files we went to SketchUp uh, we went to the BART uh, what did we do uh, I forgot where I put them uh, Maybe it's in Surfer. Uh, da, 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 da. Surfer. Let's 
This isn't where I put them. <clears throat> Let's try. I forgot where I put them. This is horrible. <laughs> uh, da -da -da. Do I have way too many files? Obviously. Um, well, goodness gracious, where did I put these? Um, I guess I stored them in the uh, <laughs> in the Bart Bart writer. Uh, yeah, okay. Anyhow, I have them out here, so let's just bring one of them in. I'm gonna do uh, the first one. Uh, we'll we'll do is um, just take a look here. What we got? We've got. Uh, let's do something sort of simple. Let's do the shorts. Uh, the blue shorts. And actually this this is the, the completed version and I'm gonna I'm gonna take you through doing these one at a time. So I'm gonna do a file new. Start from scratch here and then we're gonna open the uh, DXF file that I created from SketchUp. And if we expand this out, we see uh, I've got this set to view show grid, uh, and I've set my grid parameters. Let's see where do we do that at under options, um, show grid and grid info. Uh, I've set my grid to six uh, six inches by six inches because that is the size that I've set up in SketchUp. And if you'll notice, when we brought this image in to CAMBAM, the zero reference is not on the zero reference. It's not. It's not on our grid. So we need to. Excuse me. We need to move this. And we do this by just selecting it and going to View. I'm sorry. Going to Edit, and then going to Transform, and then go to Translate. And then it says it wants to select a reference point. Well, the reference point I want is here, my registration point. And I want that to be right on the um, zero axis of CAMBAM. So if I just, I'm using my mouse wheel here to zoom in so I can get a fine setting here. Then I left click, and now as we zoom out, we now have our part, uh, which is the shorts for uh, for Bart. Uh, we we have those registered at x y zero zero. Now what I do like to do, just to make sure I don't have a bunch of a loose, you know, real small lines. We want this to be one complete cut. So I go into uh, Edit and I do a Join. And I set my tolerance to zero. And that, that makes sure this is a complete solid line. At this point I'm ready to process it into a profile. I'm going to create a machining operation called Profile. And if you like you could even press F2 here and rename it. This is uh, Bart's shorts. <clears throat> and if we go into uh, the parameters here for a profile, I've set my clearance plane to be a eighth of an inch above the, the uh, material. And I've set my target depth uh, to be a quarter of an inch uh, below the zero reference. Um, and I've set my cut feed rate and plunge feed rate to 20 inches per minute. Um, in this particular case, this is uh, this is going to be an inside cut, and it's actually not a cut. We're drawing it with a sharpie marker, but we want to draw it on the inside because we're going to do an outline of Bart, and we're going to do that as an outside cut. 
Um, and then if we drop down, uh, we don't need holding tabs or anything like that. So the tool that I've selected uh, in this particular case, uh, we're going to use something like 0 0.0, let's say it's 0 0.03, um, because uh, this is the, the, the tip diameter of the Sharpie marker, roughly. Uh, so 0 0.03 is, is about a 32nd of an inch. That's about right. Um, we just call that a, a, uh, an end mill. We'll, uh, we'll copy this machine operation to a template because we may want to use this later. Um, for this particular part, this one's pretty simple. That's We're only doing one part. We can go up to machining and say generate tool paths and see what they look like. And we can also produce the G code. And um, I'm not going to actually create this, but uh, save it. But that's how we would then save it. So that was a real simple example. <clears throat> let's, uh, let's do another one, a little more complicated this time. I'll do another. We'll just we're not going to save this. Um, we're going to open a file called uh, the Black Outline DXF. That is, we'll go back to um, <clears throat> to our SketchUp file. That's this this file right here. Again. Kanban brand doesn't bring that in at, at our zero reference, so we need to move that. So we're going to do this again. Edit, translate, move that right down to around here. Oh, I forgot to select it. Edit, transform, translate, grab that point. And move it. Of course, as we zoom in, we'll probably find that it's not exactly uh, where it belongs. So we can do this again: edit, transform, translate, and grab the crosshairs and move them. Well, I guess I need to select it first. Keep forgetting that. Transform, translate, zoom it in grab that and move it right to zero. This way when our g-code gets generated it starts at x zero y zero. <clears throat> okay again um, we're gonna separate the we want to do this as whole one whole uh, whole path. We might want to do it in three or four parts though. Um, so I'm going to hold the left mouse button down, and I'm just going to I'm going to select the uh, his his right leg, right uh, foot, and these parts get highlighted, and we're going to do a profile for those. Now you notice earlier I copied the profile to a template, so uh, now we don't have to make any changes. It's already set up for us. Um, and we can zoom out, zoom back in, select another leg over here, create another profile for that part, and let's see, um, I just clicked on this, uh, now, now we forgot to do something, didn't we? We actually wanted to, uh, we wanted to join this. Yeah, my profiles are. <coughs> I'm gonna have to delete those because uh, when we did the join, that messed everything up. So let's go into edit. And let's join all of our parts, <coughs> and we'll do the top section as one whole part. 
Um, so we got one, two, three, four parts. And just, just for grins here, I'm going to also show you another little thing on how to do a pocket um, at the same time. So we select profile. So we've got his left, uh, what's his left foot? And this is his right, I guess. And we'll make another profile for that. Uh, we'll select his shorts. And let's make a profile for that. And you notice the order that I click on these, this is the order that it's going to cut or move the Sharpie marker in this case. Um, again, I'm going to select this whole thing and make that a profile. And let's say we wanted to go ahead and color in the shorts at this time and just do a black outline with black shorts. Then we could go up here and select the pocket tool. And again, we would set our tool diameter to 0 0.03. Um, set our cut read feed rate and our plunge feed rate in case we these were different and our depth and at this point we're we're ready to uh, to generate some tool paths and see what this looks like um, because we're doing a pocket cut it takes a little longer um, but here we are so this is showing our, our paths for the pocket cut. And then we can go to machining and generate our, our G-code, which I'm not going to do at this time but because I've already done it. But that's how you would create your G-code. And then you can bring that into um, Mach 3 or bring it into uh, um, your USB Planet USB controller and run it. Now one of the things you have to kind of think about is the code that gets generated. Uh, let's just take a look at um, since I've got this in a sandbox at in here. <clears throat> um, Say so here's the outline for uh, the, the CNC code, G code for the outline. One of the things that happens is uh, when CAMBAM generates this, it puts a tool change command right at, uh, at the start. Um, actually uh, the M6 right here, this is the tool change command. And if you have CAMBAM set up the way, um, not CAMBAM, if you have Mach 3 set up, let me go in here to show the desktop. Let's go to uh, Mach 3's loader. And there's, there's one place in our configuration under general config where I have set it up for, for tool changes. It says, when you see a tool change, stop the spindle and wait for cycle start. Uh, because of that M6 code that's in there, um, and if you have this option selected, then your uh, when you see this command, your, your uh, gantry is going to move to the tool change position, and you may not want it to do that. So you might want to just ignore the tool change when you're running the the um, G code for for the Sharpie marker. Just a little thing to think about. Um, okay, at this uh, at this point, we've we've created uh, some stuff in SketchUp. We've exported it to a DXF file. We brought it into CAMBAM. We've uh, registered the starting position XY coordinates at 0, 0 by doing a transform, um, edit, transform, translate. And so uh, 
if we needed to generate a pocket we've done that with the pocket tool and we've uh, generated our lines as profiles and before we do any of that we gotta remember to join the lines um, that kinda covers all of that um, so th this is the, Bart's gonna gonna ride the surfboard here um, maybe we would, the last thing maybe just to show you is the final results of of all this um, if I go into my pictures and I go to Nikon transfer and let's see we're at about 26 I think and yep here we go um, this is uh, this is a picture of the uh, uh, cut process and I'm glad I brought this up because uh, this is another thing that uh, you need to think about um, these pressure rollers as they go over um, your sharpie marker um, ink that ink can transfer to those rollers and it will smear every all your work so what I've done is uh, first of all I, I put a uh, sheet of fan fold foam underneath the um, as a carrier to keep the uh, rollers which have the sandpaper surface on it from scarring up my Depron which has a nice clean finish on it and then I've added uh, I, I took some 1 8 inch strips of balsa and I put those and I don't glue them or anything, I just lay them on top of my, my Depron and put my pressure rollers down on top of that. And when I move the x-axis back and forth, this keeps the rollers. As you can see right here, there's a, there's a bit of blue ink um, from the first time I ran this and I did not uh, have the balsa in place. And I saw right away that I was transferring ink to the roller which would in turn transfer ink to other spots on the on the Depron. I didn't want that so I quickly stopped the uh, the process, paused it and uh, put the uh, balsa strips under here and this keeps them an eighth of an inch um, off of the surface so the ink doesn't transfer to the rollers. Um, and then of course this is this is the final process we um, we've actually cut this out and all of this is already cut out so both sides um, and we need to talk about that so we've cut both sides so once we do the sharpie marker sharpie marker on one side what we do is we've got these little registration points and uh, what I like to do at the very, very beginning is I like to create a cut file that has nothing but registration points in it. Um, again, I did that in Canvas. Um, and I want to save this. Uh, and I did this with, um, oh, what do we do? This is the, uh, the cutout. So here was my uh, uh, that was this file here that we created a DXF file from and again um, I'll select this and do a uh, edit uh, join zero and I'll also do the same thing edit join zero and then I'll make a profile well before we do anything we need to move this so we do edit transform translate and we're gonna pick our registration point which is right here and we need to bring that down to our our zero XY position right there 
so that everything is still registered properly. Um, we're going to create a profile and let's see, let's go back here to this. Um, in this profile we probably want some holding tabs. Um, so let's go down here and set automatic. I'm going to put four holding tabs in there and we'll copy this machine operation to a template so that when we select this and say make a profile that's also going to put four tabs on it. And then if we do the machining uh, generate tool paths we can go in and reposition those as needed. Um, like for instance I might want to move that one over here uh, or you know, maybe I'll move it over here. Uh, let's move that one over here and this one over here and maybe this one here. So now we've got our tabs set up and we can set this up as a cut file. Um, going back to uh, to those pictures when we uh, we have these registration points so this this file here that we just made that's the first uh, uh, I want to do one without without uh, BART in here and I just want actually I, all I want is the four registration points so let's just uh, let's delete these two profiles and instead let's just I just uh, use my mouse to rubber band around that and then I'm going to go over and find another one next corner. Again these are six inches apart and I'm going to hold the, uh, what is it, the control key? Yeah, the control key. You hold that down while you rubber band around the part and that adds uh, the part to the collection. So now we have four holes and we're going to create a profile for that. And in this particular case our tool diameter is 0 0.0625. I want a 1 16th inch bit for example. And uh, feed rates are fine, the depth is fine, and then we're going to do a um, machine produce g-code. And let's just call this uh, registration marks dot cnc and uh, if we want to check that to make sure that it uh, I always like to check everything before I uh, get too far along We can bring up the Planet CNC software and and open. Uh, again, I have to go since I'm using the sandbox for CamBam. I have to go get the files from it. And what did I call that? Registration marks. And it looks like I missed one. See, I missed one up here. So I need to go back and reselect that or just add another profile. Somehow or another, I missed this one. So we just make another profile. So it'll cut the first three and then this one. And uh, We'll just produ produce that G code again. And looks like this time we've got it right up here. Yep. So now we have our four registration points. And as you can see, we have 
two profiles to the and uh, so then the going back, going back to the picture here uh, what we do is the first very first thing we do is uh, is we cut those four uh, holes in our Depron so that then we can t flip it over and line everything up and what I will do is just run the uh, the gantry uh, from the uh, hole in the zero zero position I run it to the left to make sure that the bit lines up with the um, uh, hole that is on the on the far left side, and, uh, and then I'll go back and, and zero everything from the uh, the very first hole. And once it's all zeroed, then we can start cutting, start using the sharpies to uh, uh, create our colors. So that's kind of it for uh, for this tutorial. I think we've covered just about everything we need to. Um, I will uh, probably be building the micro uh, surf surfer a little later on and I've got to come up with some sharpie markings for it but right now I wanted to get uh, get, get the uh, Bart Simpson character made. I made this out of five millimeter Depron and he's gonna sit on top of a three millimeter Depron um, plane if you will and uh, we're gonna have a little indoor flyer when we're done so that concludes uh, this presentation and thank you for watching and uh, we'll talk to you again later